even though we were a, what I would have thought we were a healthy family and lived quite a healthy lifestyle, we certainly didn't understand, I don't think, um, the impact of chemical toxicity, you know, chemicals in products that are not only what we consume, what we put on our skin, what's in our cleaning, what's around the house. And so this whole world opened up to me in terms of clean living. So anyone can start a ripple effect and often it, it can be your courage to face the challenge. Anyway, hello everyone. Hi, I'm Lawrence Mitchell and uh, welcome to our Finding Equilibrium podcast. So uh, Finding Equilibrium is all about helping people find the, the knowledge, the skills and the habits to help them find equilibrium, find balance in their whole lives. And today I'm delighted to welcome a really special guest. I'm here with Sally Ann Ferguson, who is the founder and the creator of Inner Origin, which is a super cool uh, e-commerce platform in the wellness spaces. I'm very passionate um, and close to my own heart. I first met Sally Ann shortly after I came to Australia when I was working at Sumo. Um, and we met by, uh, by chance, and uh, I've been a, a passionate advocate for uh, everything she does since that, since that time. So thank you so much for joining us, Sally. And I, uh, the, the business we, we, we've, we've mentioned, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but I'd love to start with just understanding your journey to, um, what to create in, in origin. How does someone move uh. from... To, to that position i know you've done some really cool things in the background yeah. but i'd love to just understand what what what, what drove you to um, uh, to create uh, this amazing platform yeah well thank you lawrence and i have to say the feelings mutual um you know when i met you you only sort of just arrived in australia not long ago and uh, i think we're so like-minded in terms of you know where we're at in the wellness industry and um you know our appreciation for life and people and uh you know you've become a great friend so i really honor that um in terms of you know how did inner origin come about you know how did the journey start for me um you know for me i guess it was a perfect storm in a lot of ways because um you know my background out of school like i did a business degree um i was part of the executive team that were part of the opening team for aldi um the grocery chain and so i got a really deep understanding of fast moving consumer goods um in that area and then I, I moved from there back into the family business and um, my family business was in the window furnishing industry and you know so I learned a lot of you know how to go into the home and um, communicate with people in that home environment and sell in that environment and you know find out what people want and meet their needs and you know which is a very different environment to being in you know a retail store or retail space or something like that so uh, I really got an understanding of both really big business small business and these two polar opposite type of industries and um, when I was you know I guess going from um, Aldi back to the family business at that time my brother um, became really quite unwell it was unexpected he was very healthy uh, you know athlete um, you know individual but he was diagnosed with over 400 tumors across his kidneys he actually had thousands at a microscopic level oh my God. and he had a type oh of cancer only four people in the world have ever had um, in fact, no one in Australia has ever had, uh, you know, the, the, the type of cancer and situation wow. that he had. So, yeah. So, so rare. How, how old was he at that time? Uh, he was about 29. Um, yeah. I was, you know, yeah, 29, 30. And I was, you know, 25, you know, around 25 into 26. So, um, yeah, it was quite a shake up to the family. And he did initially, you know, uh, I guess, with the specialists in Australia, um, they did do some partial nephrectomies and try to cut tumours out and things. Um, so he had huge recoveries from those that took a couple of years. Um, but unfortunately, everything grew back, uh, which they thought it might. And, you know, things progressed to a point where, um, you know, they just said really there were no solutions, no foreseeable solutions for him. And I think when someone kind of really says to you, you know, no foreseeable solutions you know that was kind of the hint he was getting but i think he was living in optimism and um you know when that really hit then you know he said i need to turn every stone like if if that's my fate and my path so be it but i need to make sure i've explored 
everything. And at that point in time, um, we then started to look, you know, everywhere. So all, all the international private clinics and um, all sorts of things around the world. You know, you went to America to, you know, Mayo Clinic, Sloan Kettering, Government Washington Hospital, like you name it. And um, I'm certainly not telling anyone how to handle their own chronic illness in sharing this story, uh, not making any claims. Um, but for him, there were no answers anywhere um, in the, I guess, more Western medical um, system. And so he did, as part of his, you know, search for uh, answers, he, he embarked um, on an institute called the Gearson Institute. Um, they had an office in San Diego, treatment center in Mexico, and he went and spent two weeks there. And, um, you know, it's his story. He can tell it to you some other time, you know, but as soon as he walked in there, he kind of felt at home. He felt like that could be his path. And um, so he literally came back to Australia and just adopted that full time. So he was under um, that, in, you know, the Gearson Institute for, and still is now, you know, 10 or 11 years later, um, but he was for five years solid housebound. And, um, you know, on that healing journey, you know, juices, animal supplements, all organic raw vegetables and, you name it. And so even though we were a, what I would have thought we were a healthy family and lived quite a healthy lifestyle, we certainly didn't understand, I don't think, um, the impact of chemical toxicity, you know, chemicals in products that are not only what we consume, what we put on our skin, what's in our cleaning, what's around the house. And so this whole world opened up to me in terms of clean living. So not just eating for you know weight or energy all those things but this clean living mm -hmm. and you know that was really I guess at the outset of when people were maybe starting to wake up um, to the importance of that and it was really important that we knew what was in the products that um, we bought for David or were around the house with him and all of a sudden I started to see these what I call maybe labeling loopholes that exist and they exist in most countries you know um, Things like, for example, behind the word fragrance can be up to 3,000 um, chemicals that are often, you know, banned in countries that don't have to be disclosed uh, because of, you know, intellectual um, property law, like trade secret law. So people are buying products but don't know exactly what's in the product. That's just one example. And, uh, you know, I felt that there was... If I felt a bit disappointed in that, there had to be other people out there who were wanting transparency, who were just wanting it to be easy to shop, you know, just say, well, I want to just want to know exactly what's in the product. Don't hide anything from me. I'm not going to judge it, but just <laughs> don't hide it. And I started doing some research and um, I saw over in America, there was a non-for-profit organization called the Just Label It Foundation. And there were millions and millions of dollars going into this foundation and um, big celebrities, you know, le leading it in behind it. And they were rallying um, what was called the Dark Act in America, which was calling for GMO, non-GMO labeling. And I could see they really were not making a lot of progress for like the millions and millions and millions of dollars that went into it. But they did have a statistic on the website and they surveyed a sample set and an extraordinary amount of people came back in this survey who were calling for what they called truth on labeling. And I thought, well, it isn't just me. You know, they were looking at a different area of labeling, but yeah, they were saying, come on, let's be honest about what's in products. And so, you know, in origin um, with myself and the co-founder was really born on that concept of transparency and being a marketplace, a platform where we disclose all the ingredients. You know, we have an expert product advisory board that help us to look at products like that. Um, suppliers need to be fully transparent about what is in their products. And so customers can shop knowing that they're fully informed. If they want to know what's in it, it's listed. It's there on the website and they can make that informed decision. Um, we certainly pride ourselves on carrying the cleanest products, you know, that we can find clean, clean and effective wellness products. And so this whole area became a huge passion for me in, in living a much lower toxic life, you know, in terms of product, I guess, but also beyond product, you know, what's in our mind, what's, um, you know, in our thoughts and all of those kind of things too. <laughs> Yeah, that that's cool. I mean, that's such a powerful story. And your and your brother is is doing well now. He's he's okay. Yeah, look, he's he's doing really well. He um, you know, he lives a fairly normal life now. Like those five years were very housebound. Um, you probably loved having one here one time. Uh, so when people and and we're in the middle of uh, you know, two thousand and twenty, the whole COVID lockdowns that have happened. And um, when the lockdowns first happened, you know, I, I used to. 
no joke. I used to say to people like, whatever you do, do not complain to David because <laughs> like you've been locked inside for eight weeks. Like he was every day for five years, five wow. years eating the same thing. You know, he lived between the kitchen and the bathroom basically from, wow. you know, early, you know, it could be 5 a.m., 6 a.m. till 10 o'clock at night. And uh, he's an extraordinary individual. Um, you know, you talk about Groundhog Day and blind faith, you know, I, I mean, he really wasn't seeing any results for about three years um, in terms of just that commitment to um, stick it out. And so many, um, you know, so much wisdom and that came through that, uh, you know, I think he was born with a really strong mindset. I've always said I'm so fortunate to have had a brother that, like, mm. and he's just an evolved human being and, um, you know, his journey, like his, his challenge has become the gift of so many. And, uh, you know, I often say that to people, it was his challenge that inspired me. And, um, you know, Inner Origin now has touched the lives of thousands and thousands of people. Um, you know, we've shipped millions of products in our first few years. And, uh, you know, so if you think of a ripple effect, um, anyone can start a ripple effect and often, it can be your courage to face the challenge can yeah. be the ripple effect. Very, very, very much so. I think that, you know, it, it makes you realise, doesn't it, that something positive always comes out of something very negative. Yeah. Like what happened to your brother, like 29 years old? I mean, it's a horrific story when you've got your whole mm. life and your life was quite normal, you know, went to business school, mm. got, got a really good job and everything was normal. And then suddenly something very negative occurred, which completely mm. changed your perspective and your, and your destiny, his destiny and your destiny. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's all uh, credit to him for having, in the um the commitment to keep going because a lot of people mm. even faced with that scenario wouldn't uh wouldn't endure that level of um of sacrifice no um, and that's why it's not everyone's path um you know and I, I said i mean not that you can anyway but i would never say to people what to do with their own no. chronic illness i mean he has a he's an ambassador for that institute now and he has a lot of people um that will call him and even people who have no option left and they will say, oh, I can't do that. Like, yeah. you know, it does. It takes a certain person and, um, and a yeah, mindset. I don't think you never judge people's situation. You, you, you can't, you can't. And it's really interesting if I just uh, switch gear, but you talked about the, the platform and the ingredients and I know mm. myself. And, and this is one challenge I had because before I came to Australia, I was very purist about nutrition and, um, and toxicity and all the things. And, and, and when mm. you live in that as a consumer, it's relatively easy and you can become very purist. When I started working for Sumo, and what, one of the reasons that really attracted me to Sumo was the, um, the, um, uh, the ethos and, the, um, and the, um, uh, the, the values of the business. But mm -hmm. what became very challenging, I found that very challenging, is how you commercialize and, um, and, make, uh, and make, um, make, make a business um, from product. Mm -hmm. Because naturally, if you're going to mm -hmm. create really good organic or really good ingredients, that comes with a cost. And some mm. consumers, many people are not necessarily aware of the long-term impact of having toxicity in in your um, in your food, toxicity in in what you put on your on your body. I mean, mm. I read a book years ago which opened my eyes to this called Detox Your World, and I read that, and I had that kind of that kind of really uncomfortable feeling because suddenly everything that seemed normal suddenly wasn't normal. You know, everything I was using and I just, we just got rid of everything really and started again. And that was yeah. quite an extreme um, reaction, but suddenly, yeah. and you go through a period of a lot of discomfort because you're looking at everything, suntan lotion, mm -hmm. you know, perfume, you know, all the things that are perceived to be luxuries that That's suddenly, right. suddenly yeah. you don't see them as luxuries at all. But how do you square that from a business point of view to and make sure that everything on the platform does, i.e., from a consumer's point of view, you can you can uh, purchase with confidence, so you mm. don't feel that things are. Because we all know that there's a lot of healthy products that are marketed as healthy that are not really marketed, that are not really healthy yeah. look at the ingredients. But I know you go to huge, a uh, huge extent. You touched on the mm. um, on the um, on the panel that you have. But I'd love you to expand mm. on that so I, so we really understand. Yeah how you validate yeah. the products. Although, you know, yeah, it is. And the wellness industry can be misleading. I think the one thing, um, you know, for any wellness enthusiasts out there is like, let's first admit, it's one of the fastest growing industries in the world right now. And um, when there's a fast growing industry, 
a lot of people want to jump into it and that may not be people who actually have the right pure intent um not saying it's they're bad people, but they might have not even just understand what it is. And all of a sudden you've got labeling or packaging out there that is targeted at the wellness industry. So it might be, you know, like green, brown packaging. It might even have a big word organic, you know, on the label. Um, but if you turn it over, you know, maybe there's just two ingredients that are organic and the rest are not. And it's still got some, you know, ingredients you wouldn't probably choose to have um, in your product. So you need to be careful, like as a consumer, be a little bit more um, discerning is what I would say, because when you're buying the shelf, people are normally buying off pretty packaging or price, right? So marketing um, and labeling becomes really important and in that space, and it's hard to be a discerning consumer. Um, you know, for Inner Origin, one way we've really worked hard to try and overcome that is we have engaged an um, expert product advisory board that are independent to the company. And they really scrutinize, um, you know, products, you know, for that for the ingredients, what's in it, um, the quality of the ingredient sourcing. Um, they'll look in certain situations at the amount of the ingredient. So there's a lot of things that can go on out there of, um, you know, I, I guess products saying they carry an ingredient, but do they carry enough for it to, um, you know, be what the consumer would be wanting in terms of, you know, how many grams and things like that. So we aim to carry as much quality product as we can. Um, I always say to everyone that, you know, we've put an extra layer in there to um, make it a place that people can come and shop quite comfortably. The other thing that we've done is that all of our um, you know, suppliers, their buddy suppliers to the platform, it is all on consignment. So if any of them did anything wrong or have left something out in the disclosure, like something's been missed, we find that out, they're just gone. It's an immediate um, parting. So we have that level that a normal um, retail distribution doesn't have as well in terms of, you know, we can really hold um, people accountable to that disclosing. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a journey, um, you know, that it does take a lot of extra work, of course, but I think customers deserve that. And we listen to our customers as well. You know, if they want to ask questions or they have a, you know, a thought or a suggestion of a product, you know, for the platform, um, but they can certainly know we're doing as much work as possible as we can to bring on, you know, quality products. That doesn't mean expensive, um, but quality products and suppliers appreciate that too, because they've got a, a marketplace where they're amongst other suppliers that are, keeping the integrity of their products. Yeah, which I think is so important. Having worked in the mainstream FMCG mm -hmm. space for, you know, for a period, you do realize, I mean, marketing is key because people can mm -hmm. create wonderful products, but if you can't get to the market, then you are limited. And um, right. in Australia and around the world, there are, there are various routes to market. And uh, mm -hmm. what, what I think really impresses me or impressed me right at the start and continues to do so is the fact that you do provide that uh, opportunity for very small and emerging brands have got really great mm. products but to find their market so to actually yeah. uh, promote themselves and to access that audience and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I, I love the way that you uh, that you do that and I do always say um, not always say but I have this I guess vision of um, retail at the moment and I look at retailers that are starting to you know, maybe open up into cleaner product because there's a trend, like they can see a movement there, they can see a trend. So, um, you know, we're not going to label any names, but let's say it's a retailer of some sort and they put in a clean counter, you know, like just one shelf that carries clean product. And, you know, I guess in me, I say, well, there has to be a buying department now that is learning, like, to know what's clean, they have to know what's not clean and why not, why we wouldn't have that. So where's the integrity of the retailer to still have 90% of their store with things that they now know are probably not in the best yeah. interest of the customer. Exactly. So, you know, I think we're in this, you know, this phase of change in, um, in retail. Definitely, uh, very much so, and I see that hugely. You know, it's where the consumer is becoming more educated, but educated to a point. You know, there's some consumers who've got huge amounts of knowledge and therefore will only shop in certain places. And I'm sure a lot of the inner origin customers will fit into that category. And then you've got others who will have a, a thinner level of knowledge and therefore can easily be um, taken in by some of those marketing messages. You know, clean is yeah. good, but 
the word clean doesn't mean it is clean and, um, and yeah. all of us do not have the time to be um, labeled detectives if you like because I really go no. through it. Very, you know, it's very time-consuming to do that. So we go with the cues and with the education that we um, that we have. But congratulations for creating such an awesome Thank you. Uh, platform, and it's available now in because I know it's an Australian-born uh, company, yeah. but I know you've got distribution in many countries now around the world. And we do. So we've started shipping into New Zealand, US, Japan. Um, we start shipping into Singapore in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, we got a limited range uh, available in the UK at the moment. So, you know, we're certainly expanding that international offering because people do love Australian product. They really respect Australia for wellness. And I think it's a great message that we can take overseas. We always had a global vision for the company. Um, and it's really nice now, you know, it's sort of three and a half years down the path to be starting to realize that exactly. that vision. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the US as well, of course. The, uh, Shipping to the US, correct. Yeah, that's right. So that started earlier this year. Cool. So one of the, um, just shifting the conversation a little bit. So one of the um, focuses I have, as, 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 as you know, Sally Ann, is on workplace wellbeing, which again is a category mm -hmm. that has really expanded um, around the world. And COVID has been very good for wellbeing, if you like, in the mm -hmm. sense it's made, particularly in the workplace. And you know, in the past, workplace wellbeing was seen as perhaps a peripheral topic, whereas now many more people see it as a, a strategic uh, priority for a business in terms of performance. Yes. If you've got healthy employees, then that's going to have a, an impact mm. on customer experience and business um, business performance. From a from an inner origins point of view, I know mm. you've developed different um, packages and offerings that can be appropriate for uh, to help mm. um, heads of HR and people who are looking for solutions because the, the people I talk to often they have they understand the problem and now more more so than ever they're looking yeah. for solutions to keep remote workers engaged and um, and um connected right. to, the, to the business and because you've got such a range of different offerings yeah. i'd love to hear what what types of things that you have or experience you have yeah helping to I, connect remote workers this is two things from that um corporate and and well-being you know workplace um thing is that we one we're very strong in education and we have amazing ambassadors aligned to the company that are just incredible sharing information you know people like dr sandra gabo dr charlie teo um you know yourself we've got um nine times world boxing champion roy jones jr you know sharon and your five times world boxing champion lane beachley seven times world surfing champion like all of these people who are um wanting to inspire others to take the next steps on their wellness journey. So one, we have amazing education and information to bridge that gap. Um, and then secondly, we have incredible products that we can deliver, you know, either into the workplace or into the home. We've got things that workplaces can do as a community, you know, so do a community detox together. You know, we've got 21 day um, detoxes that people get amazing results and you can do that once or twice a year. Well, that's a great thing to do in a workplace and to really shift the vitality of people mm. and do Doing that together with peers is awesome because you inspire each other. You're like, oh, how did you find that recipe last night? And what do you think of the super fizzy? How are you feeling? And you can make it really fun. You can incorporate exercise into it as well. So that those things are great for corporate. Um, it's also great in the gifting area. So we've got companies that will, you know, uh, get us to send, you know, little gift boxes, wellness gift boxes to their staff, you know, at home at the moment, um, you know, or vouchers, you know, lots of different things they can do that with that. But I think the great thing about corporate taking that, that step forward is that's them saying, we want you to take better care of yourself. Like that's almost inspiring them to do that. If, if you're, you know, gifting a voucher to your staff, or you're sending them, you know, a little reward or a gift that's a wellness product, that's like saying, well, we embrace wellness and we want to inspire you to do more of that so here's a start here's a stepping stone and that's to me that's what wellness is anyway it's a journey there's no exact answer and it's about everyone finding out more about themselves and if you just take every day say what could i do today that's going to take me one step further on my own wellness journey I love that. Yeah, that that's great. And mm -hmm. just, just talking a little bit more about about yourself, if I may. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that always strikes me is the amount of um, energy you have. Uh, <laughs> Pre-COVID, you were like always traveling and always positive yeah. and always dealing with like you know. But most people's standards fairly. Um, 
challenge, fairly meaty challenges, if you like. You know, we're talking yes. to him like, oh, this has happened. It's like, wow. <laughs> but you've, so you've clearly developed the ability of um, self, um, self-care you touched on, but mm. self-resilience. You know, clearly you're one of the most resilient people I think I know. And I'd love you to share mm. um, some of your um, practices or tips for how you maintain yeah equilibrium how you maintain balance in your life you, know, you touch mindset i'm sure that has a big part uh, to mm. play but um, what are your tips for our audience who are all struggling yeah, it's a good question the first thing is when people tell me they want to start a business i'm like are you sure you want to do that <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm kidding but um it's, that's a, you know a big journey of its own um but you know thank you and thank you for recognizing um you know, I guess the balance I try to bring to my day. I think the first way I'd answer that is I wake up every morning and say, am I breathing? Yep. Good. Nothing else is a problem. And I truly um, always try to come back to that because every day can present enormous challenges. And some of them, you know, that really um, could really affect you, you know, big worries, concerns, problems that might come up in in business or life or whatever it is. And I think if you can hold that perspective, it helps you to balance it quicker or bounce forward quicker. So it's not that you're not going to be affected by challenges. You, You know, I think everyone is, and I try as much as possible to let myself be real. You know, I'm, I am the person that will duck away for five minutes and have a little cry in the bathroom or whatever it is, you know, I don't try to trap emotions and because it's important that we let our body energetically flow. Um, But I do pride myself on being someone that, recovers or bounces forward very quickly and um resilience is something that um i've earned the hard way (laughs) uh you know i don't think you know if you have resilience unless you face real tests and challenges and you know a lot of books i read or even now being surrounded by these incredible ambassadors and actually to illustrate it roy jones jr um in a webinar the other day said you know, he had this amazing challenge in a, a boxing fight that he had and he just felt like quitting after it he was 19 and he said he went back to the gym and uh, back home in florida and he said like all the kids were there and, and people coming through school training and everything and they they said to him you know what are you going to do now and it was him looking in the eye of them and he said how can i teach them to never give up if i quit and it's a bit similar philosophy that I've always had is no matter how big the challenge, I don't ever want to say, what if, what if I just didn't give it my all? What if I didn't try to get through this? And, um, you know, I think you have to have that and know that I believe winning and whatever winning means to you only comes because you don't quit. Um, actually, Jay Z has this uh, amazing saying uh, in one of his quotes, and someone interviewed him and said, "You know, how did you get to where you are?" And he said, "Oh, we did this amazing thing. We didn't quit." And truly, like the more people you speak to who make it to the success that they want, whatever that looks like in life, the one thing they will say is, "I didn't quit." Everyone experiences huge challenges. And sometimes you can look at the challenge and think, how in the world am I going to get through this? How in the world are we going to get through this? And I think that can be overwhelming. And more what it needs to be said is, I know we'll get through it. I don't know how yet. I often say that to myself. I don't know how, but I know we will get through. And that provides a whole different thing. It's like saying, okay, let's just take the next step. Let's take the next step. We don't have to have the end revealed right now, but let's just take the next step and we can deal with the next baby challenge within the big challenge and we will get through it or we'll flow around it or, you know, that open-mindedness and solutions will come. And that's really the way I kind of balance it because I think if you look at a big challenge, it can be very overwhelming and that's where you throw it in. Um, But I also think that, you know, I like to fast forward um, my life. If I do a meditation occasionally, I'll pretend, you know, I'm a hundred and, you know, on my deathbed or something and look back and say, do I regret that I quit that? Do I regret that I made it seem like a bigger deal than what it was? Because in reality, what is it 
in a hundred, when you're a hundred, look back on it and what is it then? And I think that helps put it in perspective as well. So Mm. rather than just being in the moment and the panic of the challenge or whatever it is, just get some perspective around it and say, well, am I in this or not? And um, do it for your own fulfillment because there is nothing better than coming through a problem, just the character it builds, uh, you know, the confidence it builds in yourself. Whereas if you back out the other way and you say it's all too hard, what does that do? It eats away at your confidence, your self-belief. Um, whereas if you give it a go and it doesn't work, that's fine. If you give it a go and it works, that's fine too. Um, but at least give it a go. Definitely. And, and I think the other thing, just to build on that, because I love what you said about finding problems and recognising that there is a solution. You just may not be able to see the solution mm. at, at, at the yeah. time. And I think a lot of us are dealing with problems that we may not have uh, faced before at the particular at this point in time. Um, mm. But this point around keep going, I think, is very important because mm. you, um, you will meet obstacles. And if you're not that committed, then you'll give up very quickly. But it's the yeah. ones, and there's a lot of, you mentioned a lot of the ambassadors who are sports people. And I think we can all learn a lot from that because so much mm. of that success is, um, is psychological. And being able to get into the right mindset, the right mental space to know that you can do it. And that takes a lot of work, a huge amount of work. And I can't say I'm, yeah. a, I'm a, a, an expert at this, but I certainly certainly I relate to the keep going and I've learned mm. when you look when I look back on my own life I've learned that by keep going things may not have taken the time frame that I wanted you know I, I may not but if you keep going it doesn't really matter because no one no one when you look at the massive when you look at some of the blockbuster movies no one says mm. oh like Star Wars it like was three times the budget and took 10 years longer than it should have done. I don't know if that is actually true, but <laughs> no one looks at that. They just look at the result and they think, wow, yeah. what a cool, amazing movie. And I, I did read, I, I worked in, uh, in the entertainment industry for a little while. And I remember reading a book about all these amazing films that are so mm. much part of our culture and our history that almost never happened simply because and they only are or more to the point they only happened because there was a single person who believed in them enough yeah. to keep pushing i mean the other example it's that true. comes to mind is harry potter of course you know that could <laughs> that, that has touched so many lives and yet could easily have not happened had the um you know the the author um given up because it all that's felt right too, felt too and you have to believe in yourself to attract someone to believe in you you yes. know and and that's what they are attracted to and i think when you I always believe that um, opportunities present themselves when you're ready. And often we can think we're ready. And, you know, we might getting, be getting knocked back, so we're getting challenges. And you know what? That is really just the universe making us ready. We're not ready yet. Ready. And yeah. it's quite humbling. Um, and, you know, I can even look back, for example, like even on this business journey, like just so many meetings we've had where, I, you know, I'll feel like, well, we're ready for this. We're ready for this opportunity or we're ready for this next phase of capital <laughs> raising, whatever it is. And then you fast forward six months and you're like, oh, my gosh, well, but we weren't ready. I know so much more now than I knew then. And now we're ready. Um, and so, you know, I think that's also having just a bit of faith and trust in the process um, that things will always appear at the right time. That's wonderful. And do you have any like daily practices you do or daily habits? Like are you a big yeah. meditator? You mentioned that. Like the things that you have to do to support you yourself to show yeah. up in the, in the right way. My morning routine grounds me for the rest of the day. So that is the most important thing to me. And then if chaos happens, it happens. I can handle it. Um, so <laughs> my morning routine is literally, you know, I, I get out of bed and I um, have a celery juice, actually, um, organic celery juice in juicing machine. And I also have a um, hot drink. It's turmeric, ginger, a uh, little bit of honey, um, lemon. And so, it, you know, it's good. It just kind of cleans the system. So I really clean um, my body straight out of bed. And uh, then I do a meditation um, and I'm certainly not advertising this for everyone, but I'm open because you know what, it's just, you've asked the question. Um, I often do an enema as well. So I'll, I'll meditate like often doing that too. And then I get ready, shower, etc. Then I'll go make my smoothie or have a bit of breakfast and then I'm into work. Um, I exercise more later in the day. I know a lot of people like to exercise in the morning. I more find what I consume and just having that bit of meditation really sets my day. 
So that's what works for me. Um, and that just gives me balance. And I actually do that no matter what time. So obviously when the travel schedule was really hectic, you know, sometimes you might be getting up at 4 a.m. to go for a you know, 6 a.m. flight or 6 a.m., whatever it is, I'll do it at 4 a.m. You know, I don't let that miss in my routine. This is a key part of your day. So it's like setting yourself up for success. Yeah. Your day. That's cool. And actually, the, as soon as I implemented that, my life changed. Um, and I've you know, read so many books where people talk about the importance of having a morning routine um, and something that fulfills you because otherwise you, I think it gives you that space to say, I'm setting the tone of the day rather than letting the day set the tone for you. Whereas if you just roll into the day and you haven't taken that space to do things to ground you to give you that time to give the day direction um and have you feeling good then you know you just you're into your phone or your emails or whatever and and you know you've got things coming at you and and then the day's controlling you and your days just slip by and you haven't done anything for yourself so i think that's really important and I am a big believer that your intention can really change the outcome of a day. And so, you know, I, I do believe in, um, you know, visualizing the day, setting the mood for the day, the, you know, all of that can absolutely change the outcome of the day. And it does. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's it's cool. Important. Yeah, we have a very similar morning routine, but I completely agree. I, I have to do my morning uh, routine to set myself up for the day. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, otherwise you just don't feel ready. So I think no matter how busy yeah. you are, it actually helps you be more productive. It actually helps you achieve oh, more when more. you're in that right uh, frame of mind and when you feel good in uh, in your body. But thank way you so more. much. Yeah, thank you so much yeah. for sharing your experience, sharing your wisdom, and uh, you know your uh, enormous amount of uh, experience uh, with with us today. Are there any um, any last thoughts that you can share? Yeah. We'd love to know where you know where 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 people can um, can uh, find out more about you personally and about the you know origin uh, business. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, I'm Sally Ann Ferguson. You can follow me like on Instagram or Facebook, things like that. Um, you know, origin.com. We would love you to go online, have a look and, uh, you know, definitely shop with us. You'll love the experience. Um, we're bringing, you know, wellness into your world and we are a community more than anything. So participate in the education and events and things we have going on. Um, and I did just want to maybe just touch on one topic because a lot of people ask me, you know, what do I think about work-life balance? And um, I think, you know, for business owners or anyone in a, you know, a, a committed job, something that's, you know, requiring of them, they might have family, whatever it is. And um, I think the concept of work-life balance is actually creates stress around work-life balance. Um, for me, I've always found just being intentional about what you're choosing for your day. So if someone looked at my life right now, they would say, they would probably say I have no work-life balance because work is the biggest part of my life right now in terms of hours. I say I have work-life balance because when I chose to open Inner Origin, I knew that for the first three to five years, it would have to be the majority of my commitment. And I actually made my priorities at that time. And I said, like work, family, friends. And I spoke to my family and I said, I know I'm going to have to be away traveling a lot and what have you. I might mean I miss some birthdays. I miss whatever. Is everyone good with that? Like get the, get it out up in front. What may be stresses to that work-life balance mm. and choose it intentionally. Cause the only reason it becomes a pressure is if you're begrudging what you're doing. Whereas if you have chosen it, like you, you get up in the morning, you're saying, yeah, I know I'm doing this, but I'm consciously choosing it. The, you know, it's not life taking over my time. I'm choosing where I commit my time. And so I believe that's what brings work-life balance. And it's not something where we can judge and say, oh, you know, that's out of whack at the moment because, because sometimes, you know what, it has to be out of balance in what other people's perception is for a little while to get things to where you want to go. Like, you know, when you use the example of, you know, these old champion athletes and things, well, people would have looked at them and said, you're just addicted to your sport. Like you're about your training and your gym and you're in this and you're in that, that people would view that as being out of work-life balance. Mm -hmm. But for a period of time, sometimes you have to do that to get to where you want to go. So I always think don't compare yourself to anyone else. Just be 
conscious about what you're choosing. And I always believe every day we can make, wake up and make a new decision. So if at some point in time you're not happy with this decision that you've made in terms of where you're um, balancing your work-life balance or your life balance, we'll just make a new decision. It's not the other decision was wrong. It's just time to make a new one. And that way you're always the one who's dictating you know, the flow of your life. And there's no regrets with that. No, and that, and that is so powerful and so in, in, uh, inspiring and uh, you know, em, empowering. And, and it's very much the essence of the whole equilibrium model because mm. finding equilibrium is a highly personal thing. And mm. it's wrong to say you should work and have family because that may not be the priority. And I think if, yeah. you're, if you're doing it consciously, as you say, then ultimately you're making that choice, you're making a decision, and then you're managing everyone's expectations. So I love that. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing that with me. And I'd love to acknowledge yeah. you for everything you're doing. I mean, you're a true inspiration to me and I know, you know, thousands of other people. So thank you for, you know, making the sacrifices that you've made to bring in origin to life uh, I, I think yeah, it's an incredible um, achievement to you know, and people who haven't created a business from scratch I think you can easily yeah. underestimate that every single business that we know and trust started as an idea and to manifest that idea and turn it into something which is big and really starting to have a, a positive impact on, mm. you know, on on many many lives requires the sacrifice often from a single person at, at the mm -hmm. um, at the um, at the helm of the business to really keep it together and really drive it forward because everyone's problems and now you've got you know, many many customers in many um, in many uh, countries and armies of advocates and ambassadors, mm. and, and all of their problems are your problems. And to be able to kind yeah. of deal with that and uh, and and, uh, and keep that and keep everyone focused requires a huge amount of energy. And uh, you know, I uh, I congratulate you. you and I thank you for um, everything that you've done. And yeah. to um, to, um, to make the world a better place because I truly believe oh, that we circle you. right back. And mm -hmm. wellness, and many of us do not really understand the many things because wellness isn't the result of one thing; it is a result of mm -hmm. multiple things. And uh, uh, consuming and using products that are going to enhance your energy and your your, your vitality mm -hmm. is the starting point. And we can all do that. We can all choose to upgrade. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank and, uh, you. I so appreciate it. Thank you for having me here tonight. And um, you know, you're incredible, Lawrence, and congratulations on everything you're doing. My pleasure. See you next time. All right. Thanks Good night. Again. Bye. Bye.